What's going on? What's going on? It's your boy Aristotle R with the RAR. We at the Honey Drip Network show, That's full right. network. I'm with my boy Justin from Support Black College. Y'all give him a hand. You know what's going on. My boy ain't playing with him. <laughs> so how's life, man? How's life? Everything's good, brother. How are you? Appreciate you for having me. Man, good, 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 man. So what's your age, man? What's your age? I'm 27. 27. I'm 26. 26. So shout out to him. 95, right? 94. 94. 94. So you about to be 28 about to be this year. 28 this year. Okay. When your birthday? In July. July, so, so you're a cancer. I'm, yep, right around the corner. Okay, okay. So that means you know he spread. You feel me? You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Down. He spread. But anyways, um, yeah, man. So uh, we was talking on air and all that, man. What was the question you asked me before? Before oh, we yeah, got this I, I had a question for you, and we was talking about the gas. You know, you right. an avid smoker. Uh, I assume that you smoked the one and not the two. All right, right? you so, feel me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but now I was asking you, do you feel like you'll be more productive if you didn't be on the gas? Nah, man, like my situation different. So I told people, um, I used to have anxiety attacks yeah. when I was in the army because I started this business, right? The business that I'm currently right here, here starting this. I started mm -hmm. this business back in uh, late 2017 and um, I needed something to control my anxiety attacks. Mm -hmm. And I did not want to go to the doctor and be prescribed right, medicine right. or anything like that. So uh, I smoked uh, some CBD and then I didn't have anxiety attacks. And, <laughs> and then from that moment forward, I felt like I needed weed right. in order to stay sane. I've been, I can honestly say I've been smoking the entire time I Since ran up in. Day, so yeah, yeah like it, it has nothing to do with my productivity, but I'm also very, very ambitious. Right. I have a high motor, so right. some people don't have a high motor. Right, right. And you know what I'm saying? They get lazy like, when they get on it. Yeah, yeah, so it's all about how you use it. Like I don't smoke till later on or after I get work done. Right. You know what I mean? See, now the thing with me was I tried to smoke like a few times, like spring mm -hmm. break during college and whatnot. And then right. I was just, out of there like barely could talk like i was just smiling like feeling but weird you was on that dc gas. it was i was in dc that up north gas i ain't gonna lie i smoked some gas in philly dog i was like i see why people don't smoke yeah it's og so you, you said you said the west coast is the best yeah west coast got the best and you know you, you if you in the plug if you got a plug in atlanta you know how to get the west coast. <laughs> you good, you feel me? so do you do more sativa indica what's the what's the vibe sativa sativa and that's that's the one to give you a head or high, or is that body high? Head, head. indica in the couch. Oh, okay, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. All right. So, so what, we, what we doing, man? All right, man, I really wanted to know, like, so you specialize in teaching people how to build successful online clothing brands, right, correct? Right, right. Okay, okay, so I want to ask this. If I'm just, you know, a third grader, of course, somebody going, I'm pretty sure you know where I'm going with this. Right. What's the first step? second step and third step I need to yeah. take to starting a clothing brand. That's good. First thing you gotta do is like, you gotta figure out your self-awareness because there's so many different business models and you know, just I, I would assume trading, you got day trading, intraday, swing trading, it's a different mindset for each one. So same thing with clothing. If you wanna do print on demand or you wanna drop ship or whatever, you gotta figure out which business model is gonna work for your personality type of your skill set. Then once you do that, all of the opportunities open up. So let's just say you pick drop shipping because that's what you want to do. You want to spend as little money as possible right. and you want to be able to run it up with less than, you know, starting less than $500. First thing you do is leverage the platforms that are available right now, TikTok organic going crazy right now. I'm about to go live, keep talking. All right, but, and as well as TikTok ads. So first thing you wanna do is identify a product, something that got a wow factor, something that solves a problem. You could sell it for more than you got it for. And then you wanna go on TikTok and start posting organic content and then run ads to the organic content that actually performs the best. So okay. that's what I would do if I was starting over right, right now. So you pretty much saying to build a clothing brand, First thing you gotta do is find your niche and your lane. Right. And then the second thing you gotta do is pretty much like, second thing you gotta do is I guess, so you said first find your niche and your lane and then, okay, so talk to me about inventory. Where should a person go to get the cheapest prices if they wanna sell t-shirts, 
Oh, that's good. So there's a few different websites uh, like Alpha Broder, um, TSC Apparel, Jiffy Shirts is a bunch. Because most people, what they do is they go to screen printers and they tell them, hey, I want to make shirts. Right. And then the screen printers go to those plugs that I just mentioned and Mm -hmm. then they make the stuff for you, but then they upcharge you for the t-shirts. So all of those websites, they get like wholesale pricing. So you get t-shirts for like $1.50, maybe Mm -hmm. $2. And then what you should do is buy those t-shirts yourself, then take them to where you want them to get printed from. So that they don't tax you on top of it. Mm, see, I'm asking a question. <laughs> I'm asking a question. Come y'all want to know why? Because apparently I'm interested in something like this. <laughs> okay, okay. So I heard you talk about uh, one time um, if someone is trying to build a successful online business, right? Mm-hmm. Everything has to work. Your, um, your ads, yeah. your website. Mm-hmm your uh your delivery right your targeting targeting everything and i and i agree because everything does have to be like you have to hit all four points right because you know i do e-com too right but you know because i sold books i sold plenty of books i sold things so i understand like like but to to be honest man i never ran an ad on my book oh yeah it's just something about it (laughs) that's a 20 dollar price point like i ran the ad back in 2018 right and I still like gross five hundred k off a twenty dollar book. Were yeah. you? But I want I want to say that you were running ads to your content, um, and but not to like directly to sell nah, the book. So you're nah. building so your I got brand. A different, yeah, strategy. different approach. I got a different strategy. So here's my strategy. I'm a goddamn. Um, so I'm going to take my most viral post. Mm-hmm. Look at the analytics. All right, and then. I'm going to run an ad on that. I'm going to save it. You know, get a uh, app. You know, Instagram app uh, that can save the yeah, reels for right. you. And I also look at the commenting and the wow factor. Yeah. So if everybody's sharing, everybody's saving, everybody's commenting, all of that, that's that means other people will like it. Right. So I run an ad on that, and I don't send you to no website. <laughs> I don't send you to nothing. I send you to my page. Yeah. To follow. Makes sense. So then. I retarget ads to my followers. Right. Simple as that. It's a boom, come here situation. And they warm audience now. And then you, but then one thing I would say too is that everybody can't do that only because you got to be consistent with the content too, which you are doing. Yes. Because if you're getting followers and then you're not putting out the content and staying consistent with it, then you're not nurturing that new audience that you got. Yeah. See, what people don't realize, they watch me. I nurture testimonial, nurture nurture testimony, right? So it's like, I'm entertaining you. I'm going to give you a reason to follow me and not just one reason, but more than one reason. Sometimes if people feel like they can get it all here, I'll stay. All right. So boom, we give them the music, we give them the entertainment, <laughs> we give them the uh, lives, we give them the actual game, right. everything. And then, you know, I learned polarization is key if you right. want to blow something up. You right. feel me? Like, yeah. you can't be too nice, can't be too mean. Right. You got to be in the middle. Right. <laughs> so people don't realize when your page is too positive, it's corny. Mm-hmm. When your page is too negative, it's like, ugh. Yeah, it's like, But when you want to make money, you got to kind of have polarity. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is good. This is good because I wanted to ask you about that too, where, you know, what we do is like we educate and we also entertain and mm-hmm. you're doing that with the music right now too where mm-hmm. you're really educating in the music but it's not corny education right. it's it's dope beats good lyrics so what do you see like are you trying to carve out a new industry like what's the goal with the music for you you just having fun with it um that's a great question man um i'm actually working on a distribution deal okay but it's like Honestly, where however far it takes, yeah. it, I already made the money. So right, it's right. Like, so it's whatever. It's almost like try something and, and go hard at it. Yeah. And then one thing I learned is if you shoot for the stars, you'll land on the moon. That is a you fact. You feel me? Yeah. So it's like, I'm going to just keep shooting, keep going. And then whatever happens, happens. But yeah. at the end of the day, as long as the money good, I'm still right. making money right now. So I ain't, you know what I'm saying? It's not about the money. It's really about the impact. Right. And also, if I could change the culture single handedly, That'll be cool, but if not, right. that's cool too, you feel me? But it's like, um, yeah, in a, in a way, the biggest dream, if I had to be honest with myself, mm-hmm. would be to kind of free the minds of, of young black men and uh, get us away from right. uh, the stigma that um, 
because a lot of them just want to be accepted. Right. So that's why they join the gangs mm-hmm. and all of that because they people go where they feel the most accepted. So the first people right. to make them feel, because you got to think when a young boy do something bad, right. he got the, you know, he can be 10 years old, the 16 year old is going to say, what, boy, yeah, young yeah, nigga, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. Praise him for being bad. Right. So Cause we course. doing the same thing. So come rock with us. That's what yeah. we do. And then yeah. when he eighteen, the twenty one year, the twenty two year old is gonna praise him for. Right. Oh yeah, you the street one. Right, you the right, shooter. Right. Right. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, boy. And he feels so good about himself because right. he like he never had anyone like praise him this and that. So it's like, but it all be a result of either poverty mm-hmm. or fit not feeling accepted. Right. So I wanted to kind of build a brand on teaching young men how to get money right. without, you know, feeling like you gotta be street. Especially through the music too, because that's what that's what trains us as well, like the yeah. programming, the TVs and whatnot. I'm curious though, do you feel like this style of music, the education and entertainment could be like Drake level? Will it ever get there? Cause I feel like there's a piece of people that might be like, oh, that's corny, I don't wanna learn about this or whatever. Right. Is, do you, can you see it getting to that type of level? If you can, I can. Do you? Yeah, I mean, for real? yeah, bro. Well, shit, man. Um, I appreciate you believing in, you know, the vision. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just curious. I hope so, man. Like, yeah. honestly, like, but at the end of the day, it take money to, to get right. it there. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then on top of that, you know, like, it ain't as easy as people think. Right. Everybody wants money. Right. So it's like. You got to do it strategically and say, because I could easily do that if I just if I just pay for it. Right. Yeah. But it's like sometimes you want to strategically do it to where it's cheap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't cost you too yeah. much, and you're trying to. You know what I'm saying? Like. And I yeah. feel like you got to make it look good too, because I feel like one thing you don't want to do in the industry is folks be like, "Oh, that's bro that's just gonna pay his way and do do do." You got to build true, genuine relationships as yeah, you go. Yeah. Like that's what I'm saying. So it's like that's the part that makes it more than anything mm-hmm. that it looks like in the music industry. So right. it's like, I'm hopping in the industry I don't know about, so I'm gonna use my influence to right. build it, right. rather than coming here and I know I'm gonna get, you know what I'm yeah. saying, tossed around, hey, right. pay this, pay this, pay this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So right. it's like, yeah, like that's really what it is. Now it's interesting though, because, and I was gonna ask you if it was something that you was already passionate about, because I found myself like being passionate about other things, whether it be real estate, music, whatever it was. Mm. But then I was like, you gotta have money to do these things. So when I started the business, I was like, bro, I'm trying to get money to do the things that I care about. So I was wondering if that was something that happened with you too, or were you like music first and then you went to go get some money? Or Believe it or not, man, like, being, I'm from Atlanta, so it's like, I always knew I could rap better than a lot of people. But because I don't present myself as the most street, ain't nobody, you know, really going, you can't really, I'm not finna go to people and say, bro, I rap and I'm hard. Right. They're gonna be like, where's your gun? Right. Why your pants not sagging? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Right. Nigga, where the tattoo on the face? Right. Where this and that? Who you hang around? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, I just kept it on the low. Mm-hmm. But I was like, the moment I ever get a chance to showcase my talent, I'm gonna do it. Right. So I always knew I could rap and rhyme better than most niggas yeah, yeah. my age and all that. But like, it you was played like, me a few joints at the crib and I was yeah. like, oh, nah, you really sliding for real. Yeah, like, like I knew I could, but it was like, I always knew I didn't need to explain anything to do because all dudes do is hate. Right. And then they and then they go, you know what I'm saying? So I always knew that. Like it, it don't I won't say it's hating, but it's just in the hood or you playing around with your boys. Right. If they on they gonna dick ride the person who got the most clout. Right. right you know what I'm saying? Right, so right. ain't nobody about to you get know what I'm saying, oh, buddy do this. You know right. what I'm saying? So I I was always to do I always moved around, so I never really had time to really, I, I was always a new kid. Yeah. So I never really had time to like, you know what I'm saying? I guess you can say build long-term relationships. Right. So anywhere I go, yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, I fuck with everybody, mm-hmm. but I know I ain't best friends with yeah, you. Yeah, you feel yeah, me? I do feel you. So I always been that way. So I always been kind of standoffish in my whole life because I always <laughs> been a new kid. You know what I mean? I do feel that because I want to talk a little bit about this too because, um, you know, we talk about it and whatnot. Right. So, 
all of these, uh, we in Atlanta, a lot of entrepreneurship conventions, con- you know, conferences, et cetera. Mm-hmm. What's your general like take on just the entrepreneurship space in Atlanta, mm-hmm. just the people, the conferences or whatever? Is it, I'm, I'm just curious, like, cause I know that me and you, we both like low key introverted, but we can yeah. turn it on when we need to and go right. out. So like, do you enjoy the conferences? Do you enjoy I the do. networking or do you like just doing your thing? I do actually, like I went to one, uh, him five. 500 conference that was actually the first conference oh wow. i ever like i won't say attended but enjoyed mm-hmm. i didn't i honestly like they weren't that that they weren't that entertaining mm. so i can say like i can honestly say i'm the type of person who gives credit where it's due right so a lot of people gonna hate right you get what i'm saying right i don't do that somebody did something i fuck with them right i gotta give them their props right so it's like I don't give a fuck if they make money off of it. I'm not that type of person. Right. You got to keep it 1,000. You can't be worried about another man paper. Right. And in the day you make another man paper is what it is. That's all that, yeah. Man, and what I liked about uh, what I saw with Marcus conferences too is like he had Meek come out, then you got Moneybag Yo come out. So it's still a blend of that education and, and yeah. entertainment too. Yeah, and then like real gems were dropped. Um, it was honestly uh, the the hardest conference I ever seen and concept I ever seen. Keep it yeah. one thousand. I don't think I ever seen anything better. In that. Yeah. If I was to be honest, and I'm keeping it one thousand, yeah. I get him in his flowers when yeah. I say so. Nah, I feel it. But like I've been to conferences that weren't like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like it's just a bunch of you know people just walking around talking. Right. So right. Like I really like. But yeah, man. Uh, as far as the scene, I'm gonna tell you the truth, man. Like the Atlanta scene. It's kind of being a kid from Atlanta. Mm-hmm. It feels amazing that my city is on the spotlight. Cause right. I, cause if you could ask anybody outside of this room, we saw, we know, we knew what we were capable. Of. It was something magical mm-hmm. about this city. I, I went see. to elementary school. Yeah, 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 like I remember it from from as long yeah. as I can remember right. to now. Right. So it's like it wasn't this. Yeah. Uh, all we had back in the day was the underground. Uh, like for entertainment, I'm serious, bro. Like we only had the underground, Centennial Park. Yeah. There wasn't no aquarium. See, I remember Atlanta before the, that's even the wild. aquarium. Yeah, that's wild. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. See, I'm real Atlanta, <laughs> right, brother? I can't even name you what we did for fun, right? But we had fun as a city, <laughs> and everybody was kind of close. It was real family related, like people who from Atlanta. This the old Atlanta, right? You feel me? No, I get that. But I think something is beautiful about that too, because when there's like, it's kind of like when you a kid and you don't, you you just go outside and play. You start to dream up your own stuff. So I feel yeah, like it was not having ambitious. too much to do made Atlanta be innovative, and then they got into the music and got started blowing up all these different industries. It was like a bunch of Atlanta. You know what Atlanta feels like, bro? <laughs> What's Back that? the day you know what it felt like before 2005 um all that Hmm. like it felt like we were caged ambitious like people who just didn't have money yet Mm -hmm. like it felt like it was a bunch of people with so much talent ready to blow right like I remember when I was in elementary school, we were taught how to make beats. When I was in middle school, we were taught how to make beats. Damn, we man. actually learned from music. So how I'm doing financial literacy yeah, music. Yeah. Do you know we actually did Atlanta when I was a kid, we did that in elementary. And we yeah. wrote our own raps. That's wild. And then we made our own beats. Like in we school. Were, yeah, so I had a, it, I went to Heritage Academy. Um, yeah. So he said close the line, so. I went to uh, Heritage Academy, right? Mm. Uh, in Atlanta, man, and that's where we did it. We made beats, we did all that. Uh, where'd you go to elementary school? I went, I was in, I'm was. i from Houston, so I went to an elementary school called Barbara Bush. How was that growing up in Houston? Growing up in Houston was cool. Um, I grew up in a single parent household, which is me and my mom. My dad went to jail when I was two. He got out when I was 17, so didn't really have, but my mom was like, crazy overachiever, entrepreneur, like raised me really well. So it was cool though. It wasn't, I didn't stay in like a crazy bad neighborhood, but it wasn't crazy good either. It was like right in the middle. Ah, we about to get deep. Cause you <laughs> said you didn't grow up with, whatever, you grew up without your father. Mm-hmm. How, how was that emotionally for you? Like, as far as like, cause I seen men mm-hmm. who didn't have fathers and I seen that it really hurts them um, and it's something that is long lasting. Mm-hmm. 
they they rarely recover from it. Right. And, and and it's crazy because it's men against men. We're right. two boys, right? Right, right, right? So it's like it's like it's a dynamic because it's so much pride in between yeah. that. Because both of y'all men. Right. You get what I'm saying? I understand. So how is that? Like emotionally how that was growing up for um at first uh i didn't think too much about it i think because i was just young but then my mom did a really good job like the the part that hurt the most for me was when my dad came home from jail so in my head as a kid i'm thinking my dad gonna come home we about to have a crazy happy family we gonna do x y and z but then when he came home my mom wasn't trying to mess with him because like bro you trying to come back after 15 years that ship then sailed right. so he went and got a whole new family and i'm thinking bro like you got a whole new family on me you don't what did i do wrong to make you want to not come and like you know come mess with us but not knowing that my mom and dad had a situation that they wasn't trying to mess yeah. with each other so in my head i'm thinking it was me but then my mm -hmm. mom did a really good job of saying like bro no matter what we've been we did 17 18 years without him we, we've been good, you've been successful, you skipped a grade, you go going to Howard University, we was we good without him and we'll be good if he come back and we'll be good if he don't. So I think my mom did a really good job there and then keeping men around me that were into like entrepreneurship, real estate, stuff like that. Um, and then also keeping men away from me where I knew that she had like a boyfriend or something like that, but if he wasn't the type that she wanted to have around that she think would be good for me, I never met him. So I think it was a good balance, but it didn't hurt too much because after I got over it, when um, I realized that he just was a grown man trying to live life. Now we got a good relationship. He an entrepreneur and we we vibe and we bond now. So mm -hmm. um, after I grew up a little bit and realized that people got real stuff going on, I was like, okay, cool. Like it's whatever. And then now mm -hmm. we just, we cool. That's good, man. Cause uh, some men don't recover from it. Yeah. And I'm glad you did. You yeah. feel me? Like, like that's a real issue that I feel like that's not talked about a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or put a, a real magnifier on right. this issue because it's right. real. Right. You see like offset goes through it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? Right. Like uh, so many men go through that. Right. Right. And I watched guys go through it. Had a situation recently, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Scene. So I, it's like, I'm like, dang, this daddy issue thing is something that really needs to be tackled yeah. and really magnified. And we focus on so much other stuff. Right. But this right here, yeah. I feel like in black America, mm -hmm. we need to put a whole magnifying glass on this one topic. Right. Men against their son. You, you see how 50 cent, you see how like no matter what, he can be successful, this and that, but in the back of his head, mm -hmm. You always think about what you don't have. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, a thousand percent. You know what I mean? So I know how it is. Cause mm -hmm. You can be, you can have everything. Right. Everything is gonna be going right. Right. But and it could be ninety percent there, but that ten percent hurts so gonna bad. Hurt you every yeah, time. Yeah, like that that one thing you missing. So I had to kind of come up with this logic of everybody has that something. Yeah. So. Whenever something fucked up, I'm like, well, I guess this my something. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you <laughs> yeah. feel me? Like, everybody got to have that something right. in their life. And that's but the part. That's liberating, though. I like that, though, because yeah. even when you think about it like this, you know, everybody be thinking that everyone's judging them, thinking about them, yeah. what you got going on. But when you realize that everybody got something going yeah. on, it's like you go to high school and you got a pimple and you think everybody looking at you, but, but everybody got their own stuff going on. Yeah, and they're they not worried about you at all. Facts. But, that's facts, bro. Yeah. So I had, that's what makes me walk with confidence, smoke my weed. <laughs> because <laughs> it's like, how can you judge me? Right. You got you, something you, too, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, you feel me? Like, that's how it is. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like you could do whatever in life and it's like you're gonna be like man everybody kind of fucked up right because it's human nature right but it's like you gotta learn how to be happy and learn how to be grateful and learn that somebody got a worse time than you yeah so it's like but i do know that father thing affects people believe it or not man i didn't live with my father either oh really yeah nah man my uh dad and mom i never seen them together when we have a picture together oh wow uh... but how I took it, I always took it positive. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, yeah. I don't know how. I did stay with my dad for two years, uh, three years actually. Oh, really? And that's when I lived in the hood. And it was honestly something I feel like God wanted me to see and something I needed to be the person I am today. Right, right, right. Like, 
I, I, I couldn't imagine where me and my dad would be if I didn't stay with him for right. three years. I stayed with him from second to fifth grade. Oh, okay. So I lived a real boys in the hood life. Right. Like my mom, we we my mom started off poor because she had my sister at seventeen and me at nineteen. Yeah. And then my younger sister at twenty one. Oh wow. Yeah. So um we started off humble beginnings. Yeah. And then my mom pushed through, got real middle class, started getting money. Yeah. Right? Same. Crazy, right? Yeah. So I start we started off and then we, we got up and then eight years old I go move with my dad. Right. Yeah, so and then we living in the hood, Cleaver right. Avenue, where Young Thug and uh, YSL okay. got indicted. That's yeah, where I lived when crazy. I was when I was a kid. Wow. Right? I remember seeing Young Thug when I was a kid at oh, the park. Wow. That's he was crazy. A teenager. He was a, he was a <laughs> tall, skinny black teenager. That's wild. I used to at that park where he throwing up gang signs and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's where I played when I was a kid. That's crazy. In fact, I lived right across the street from him. Yeah. Right. So uh my actually my whole family did. We lived in the house. It's still it's still up to yeah. this day. Wow. If you ride down Cleveland, you'll see my family. It's actually right across the street from the uh Cleveland Avenue Elementary School. Oh, okay. So yeah, man, I grew up uh in that area and then my well, you know, my family still live there. Mm -hmm. And um I would say that was the roughest area I ever seen yeah. in human in human experience. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um Killings. I didn't see a killing until until I moved over there. I yeah. didn't even think that was what going were down. Like you that, get what right, I'm saying? Yeah. Like I always lived with my mom. Mm -hmm. So when I moved my dad, yeah, killings, selling drugs. Right. You see it all. Wait. Yeah. So when you when you be on live and you uh, be like, oh, this is my dad or whatever. So mm -hmm. is that your stepdad or something, or is that's that your dad? Oh, that's your dad. Okay. Yeah, that's my actual dad. So he just come and like you know kick it and y'all be on live yeah. and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, like I stayed with him, but I still felt safe even though all of that was happening. Right. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, I still made the honor roll of living with my dad and this and that. But like I said, like it was something I needed to see. Cause it taught me how to survive. Right, that's it's things right. I never forgot. Yeah, street like, smarts. You know what I'm saying? Street smarts. Yeah. I developed that from just that four, right. three, three to four year time. Period. Yeah, and then um, and then living with my mom, I developed that uh, how to make money, get good grades, all of that. Yeah. So the person you see now is a reflection of how oh, I grew up. Yeah. I grew up in the streets before, and then I grew up seeing my mom make it corporate. Right. From rise from the bottom yeah, corporate. Yeah, facts. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I done seen both things. Right, and now you're doing the same thing, both sides. Yeah, yeah, like that's why I can go to the streets, connect with them. I can go to the, you know, stock, pe stock market people, connect with them. Right. It's rare that somebody has that dynamic. Yeah, you feel facts. Me? So yeah, that's where it come from. Let's see what we talking about. But yeah, <laughs> man, that shit. No, that's good though, cause like um, I was thinking, I was thinking about it too, cause when you t started talking about that, I was thinking about school where I was like high school 4.0, 3.9, whatever, but I was still you know cool throwing the parties, this and that. So I felt like you was probably yeah. somewhere along the same. Like you get you cool with the nerds, but you could still go kick it with whoever you got that's to on fact. the other side. Like, I, I really kicked it with the streetest of the street in the in the uh, school and the nerdiest of the nerds. <laughs> but so I feel like. See, an athlete be saying, oh, I did this and that. No, you didn't. The nerd, <laughs> you didn't fuck with the nerds. Right. <laughs> I fuck with the athletes, the nerds, the 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 grimiest of the grimiest. Right. Everybody. That's one thing I can say. Yeah. I went to the same school with Playboy Cardi. Uh, it's a rapper named Uno the Activist. Uh, oh, yeah, he a football safety named uh, Eric Berry. Okay. If you ever heard of him, he played for the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, okay, cool. Back in the day. He was actually the fifth pick Oh wow! Yeah, he 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 was a safety. He was like that. Then. I think he he's actually the highest drafted safety in history. Oh wow! Yeah, that's fun. I don't think there's a safety that ever got drafted uh, fifth besides him. That's wild. <laughs> so yeah, like it's a lot of legends that come from my school, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, man, like that's how it was. I hung with the from the bottom to the top. Right. That's yeah, hard, so that's kind of why I'm known too, because I went to so I went to three different high schools. Oh wow. <laughs> I went to a school, so I build at least a thousand followers from every high school. Oh uh, yeah, because you go yeah. So I had 
before I even started a business, I already had 3,000 organic right. from just three different high schools. Right. You feel me? Yeah, that's hard. So yeah, that's, that's where the dynamic come from. I love we only got a few minutes. We got to. Well, four minutes to close. Yeah. Right. Ask what does he have coming up for the brand? So yeah, what do you have coming up? Like what's the, what's, what should the world know about like what you got coming up, you feel me? Yeah, right now I'm just uh, focusing a lot on personal brand. I just see how important it is because it's uh, it's much easier when you want to start. Excuse me, when you want to start new businesses to stand on a personal brand and just get it going with that that fuel right out the gate. So um, I've been focusing a lot on building my personal brand and then helping my mom uh, hit her business out. She's like killing it right now. But I felt like it'll be like good to repay her for what she did for me and go sauce her up because we did it for ourselves. My as well go sauce her up too since she did everything for me and then other than that just invest in the money that you know that we make into passion projects and different plays crypto real estate etc so that's kind of what i'm on right now okay so like we're like trying to switch places pretty much i'm trying to build up other businesses and I because I already got my personal brand. So we so we, <laughs> right. we need what he tells hey, you. Bro. Yang, huh, you already man? know we good, bro. Yeah, so yeah, you know, I'm I'm working on the webinars. Oh yeah, we're gonna get you sauced. Yeah, and I'll show you how to get sauced with this personal brand. There too, it is. Bro. There it is. Hey, that one thing I know how to do. We know how to turn somebody up. Now nah, yeah, yeah, but I wanted to ask you that real quick last yeah. question before we get out is I know you said you spent like couple M's on the personal brand too. Can you can yeah. you just break down like, you know, when someone hear that I spent three, four M's on a personal brand, where did yeah. it go? Like, what did, what, what did it go to? <laughs> hella J's, hella designer, <laughs> private jets, <laughs> cars, food. Right. Uh, See, I thought you was gonna say mostly ads, like. Oh uh, yeah, M. ads too. Oh, okay. Ads. Um. Yeah, yeah, like all of that, like just getting it seen, like <laughs> right. living life, right? And getting it seen, yeah. And believe it or not, people buy from who they want to be like. That's a fact. They want to mirror you. you yeah. Know? So like, I already went through my phase of that. Right. You feel me? Now <laughs> I can go get this money. Right. You feel me? Yeah, that's fine. But like, that's what I'm focused on. Like. Anything less than a million in a month is is not good for me. Bro, that's a fact, bro. You feel me? Yeah, bro. So like that's everybody go right now, yeah, right? It's, to it's, consistently make over an M a month. That's so good. if I had to be honest, like we chasing the same goal. <laughs> hey, you bro. feel me? We gonna help each other along the way. You know facts, how we get. Facts, so. That's what we on, man. Cool. But shit, man. Y'all check y'all checking my boy Justin. Support black colleges, teach you how to Get your clothing brand right. Make sure y'all go to honeydripnetwork.com so you can learn how to get these stock, pick, stock picks, sports bet, uh, anything you want to learn, man. Um, we're going to teach you. And I'm Aristotle. All right, with the Rari. You know what's going on, man. What you want to say, man? <laughs> uh, you can follow me on my social media channels, Justin P. If you want to learn how to build your clothing brand from zero to multiple seven figures, I can help you out there. And other than that, I can't wait to see what we what we do together, how we, where we take this shit, man. Oh, yeah. It's all right, man. So... Hey man, we in the A. This is Wakanda. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? I be linking with my boy Justin. I be linking with my boy Tez, uh, Trail, my mm -hmm. boy, my cousin Jeff. Grips good, decent treats. <laughs> you ever come to the A, you know where I'm playing, man. If you ever come to the A, you better go get you some grips on Metropolitan. I even know what 1747 <laughs> Metropolitan Parkway, man. Listen, hey, come man, on, you know nah. what's going on, man. <laughs> hey, listen, let's get it, man. That's All right. Hey. All right, bet. Yeah, let's get it. That's a good one, bro. All right, we out.